Hey everyone, it's Nurse Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to talk about the hormones and body systems that work to balance the fluid in our body. So let's get started. The water in our body must be balanced. We can't have too much or too little and if we do we start to have major problems. So whenever an imbalance starts to occur we have hormones and certain systems in our body that will kick in to hopefully help correct those imbalances. So in this lecture, we're going to review those hormones and systems. So I'm going to be talking about the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, known as RAS. I'm also going to be talking about the thirst mechanism and review those hormones known as antidiuretic hormone, which is known as ADH, aldosterone, and the natriuretic peptide hormones. So first, let's review the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, also known as RAS. Okay, so let's say you have a patient who has fluid volume deficit. So thinking back to our lecture on fluid volume deficit, we know that our patient has low fluid in their body, and this can cause a low blood pressure, and our body doesn't like a low blood pressure. So whenever it senses this, this RAS system is going to kick in, and the whole goal of the system is to increase your blood pressure, and how it does this is it gets angiotensin II involved, which is a hormone that's also going to stimulate other hormones, such as aldosterone and ADH, that antidiuretic hormone. And those hormones are going to add more water to your blood to help increase blood volume, hence increase blood pressure. So how this system works is that your blood pressure drops. That drop in blood pressure indicates to the body, hey, we have a loss of fluid, so we've gotta do something about this. And this causes the kidneys to respond, specifically the juxtaglomerular cells inside that kidney. And they are going to release a substance called renin. And whenever renin is present in the blood circulation, this causes the liver to respond. And whenever the liver responds, it is going to activate a substance called angiotensinogen. And whenever angiotensinogen is there, it actually turns into a substance called angiotensin 1. So we have angiotensin 1, but again, the whole goal is to get angiotensin 2 involved because that is that big major hormone that's going to actually cause some things to happen. So we've got to get there. Now, how do we get there from angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2? Well, that is where ACE comes in. ACE stands for angiotensin converting enzyme, and this helps turn angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. And now that we have angiotensin II involved, things are gonna start getting interesting because now we'll be able to achieve our goal of increasing that blood pressure because angiotensin II has major effects on the body. One thing it does is it causes vasoconstriction. So we're gonna get narrowing of those vessels. And when we narrow those vessels, it's actually gonna constrict the blood flow to the kidneys and limit its ability to excrete water, which is what we want because we want that water to stay in the body right now so we can increase our blood volume hence increase our blood pressure. In addition, angiotensin II is going to cause our adrenal cortex to release a hormone called aldosterone. And aldosterone will cause the kidneys to keep sodium, which will also cause us to keep water. And again, we wanna do this because we're trying to increase our blood volume. So whenever this happens, your patient will have a temporary decrease in their urination, which again is what we want. And then another thing angiotensin II does is it causes the posterior pituitary gland to release a hormone called ADH, which again is antidiuretic hormone. So how this works is it's going to cause the kidneys to keep water. And whenever we keep water, we're gonna increase blood volume. So think of it this way. If you're familiar with how diuretics work, we give patients diuretics to help them urinate extra fluid out of the body. It's used to treat a lot of times fluid volume overload. Well, if we're having a substance in our body called antidiuretic, anti means works against, we're working against that concept. So let that help you remember what ADH does. ADH is gonna cause your body to keep water. It has an antidiuretic effect. And then lastly, another thing angiotensin II does is it stimulates the thirst mechanism. So let's review how the thirst mechanism regulates fluid in our body. So whenever this mechanism is stimulated, it's because again of low fluid in the body. So whenever you have low fluid in the body, think about your blood plasma's 
osmolality. How's it going to be? It's going to be high because you're going to have a low amount of fluid in there, but a lot of solutes. So whenever we have a high blood plasma osmolality, it's going to cause the hypothalamus to respond, particularly the osmoreceptors inside the hypothalamus. And look at that word, osmoreceptor. We have osmo and we're talking about osmolality. So these receptors are very sensitive to how the blood plasma's osmolality is. That's how they respond is based on if it's high. So whenever they respond, they cause antidiuretic hormone to be released, ADH. Now ADH is also called vasopressin and ADH is actually made in the hypothalamus, but it's stored and it's secreted in the posterior pituitary gland. And this is when the thirst sensation is going to be experienced. So the person is going to have this desire to drink fluid. So once ADH is secreted, it's gonna cause the kidneys to respond. They sense the ADH hanging out. And it's particularly going to cause the nephrons within the kidneys to start doing some things a little bit differently. So your nephrons are all those little structures within the kidney that really work to keep the kidney functioning and help create your your urine. So the ADH is going to act on two particular parts of that nephron. It's going to affect the distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct. It's going to cause those structures of the nephron to actually reabsorb water. So instead of taking water and putting it back into that nephron, hence into the filtrate so it'll be urinated out, instead it's going to cause your body to reabsorb that water and put it back into the bloodstream, which is what we want because we're on a fluid volume deficit and we need water back into the body. So water is going to be retained. And whenever we retain this water, it's going to help our plasma osmolality. So instead of being so high and high of solutes, we're going to add water back to it, help water it down just a little bit and even out the water and the solute concentration so we can normalize the osmolality. So we just reviewed hormones and systems in our body that help us correct a fluid imbalance where we don't have enough fluid in the body known as fluid volume deficit. But how do we prevent those systems from doing their job too well, where they add way too much fluid into our body and send us into fluid volume overload. Well, we have a group of hormones that help prevent that. They really keep those system and hormones in check. And they're known as the natriuretic peptide hormones. And one of these hormones is known as atrial natriuretic peptide, also known as ANP. And this hormone is secreted by heart cells when there is stretching of that atrial wall. And remember the atria are the top chambers of the heart. Then we also have what's called BNP, and you may hear BNP a lot whenever you're taking care of a heart failure patient because these patients are in fluid volume overload, and BNP stands for brain natriuretic peptide hormone. And this is a hormone that is actually released by the heart cells whenever there's a lot of ventricle wall stretching. So whenever we have the RAS, aldosterone, ADH, and thirst mechanism doing their thing, they were adding water back into our blood system. So whenever that water is added back in there, it's going to go up and it's got to go into the heart because the heart's job is to pump that extra fluid out throughout the body. Well, when you're adding just too much, your heart's going to start to sense that because it just wants to get it at a right point so it doesn't overstretch because it's overstretching those atrium ventricles because that water, that extra water in the blood is going there, it's signaling, hey, we may be going into fluid volume overload. So these hormones are secreted by those heart cells that make up the atria and the ventricles. And what these hormones are going to do is they're really cool. They actually work against angiotensin 2 because angiotensin 2 was our big star of the RAS system. That's what got aldosterone, ADH, that thirst mechanism, all of that involved. So it's going to stop the effects of aldosterone, ADH, and renin. So we don't go into a fluid volume overload. So it's like a check and balance type hormones that help us manage our fluid. Okay, so that wraps up this video over the hormones and body systems that work to help us balance our fluid in our body. If you'd like to watch more videos in this fluid and electrolyte series, you can access the link in the YouTube description below.